So we're going to talk Des Moines today. Tier 10, heavy cruiser. She's a fantastic boat. Super fast reload. She's got auto-loading 203s. Is that correct? Yes, auto-loading 203s. Extremely fast reload. So if you look at her, her here on paper, 5.5 um, second reload. I have um, John Doe, the ex... Um, what's his name? Seagal in here. Um, I have adrenaline rush on this captain. Uh, I'll tell you when you start taking damage, your reload comes down pretty quick. I think uh, the battle that I'm going to show you right after this, I get it down to about 3.8, 3.9, I think, is my reload on these two or threes. And they're just hellacious. I mean, 14% per chance of fire, but with that rate of fire, it's just insane. Okay. Um, I don't normally look at the armor here, but I wanted to show you something. So when you look at the bow of this ship, right, you're not really looking at a whole lot of armor. It doesn't seem like a whole lot of armor, but 27 inches, or 27 inches, yeah, I wish, 27 millimeters of armor that's angled, right? That overmatch pretty much when it comes to battleships. Um, Yamato's the only thing you need to really fear um, at range. Mid-range, close range, this thing's going to get chunked. You're going to lose a whole lot of hit points, but... The key to this ship, and you're going to see it in the gameplay I show you shortly, um, ignore this aft turret, okay? You only have two. Play with two, for the most part. This was an opportunistic thing. It's kind of like how I say um, the Japanese cruisers with the torpedoes, don't use your torpedoes. Don't use them, unless like it's an opportunistic or oh crap moment where you're, someone comes around the corner. All you do is you present broadside. And you're going to see it. You're going to see in the next battle, there's a Des Moines that I just continuously punish. And he just feels like he needs to keep trying to use that third turret and not use his bow. And it's unfortunate that, that he does this. Um, AA for this ship, everyone knows the AA on this ship is amazing, right? So if you do an AA build, uh, something a lot of people don't think about. Um, the scale here actually only goes to 100. But your AA rating can actually be above 100. It just stops at 100. So, if you're building it out, don't think that, oh, when I reach 100, that's it. You can be 100, 10, 100, 15, 120, whatever the case may be. I don't know what the actual highest value uh, out there is, but you can actually have that. So, the AA rating on this thing is pretty damn good, and you can get the AA out to, I think, actually 6.5 if you do a full AA build. I don't have a full AA build because I kind of do a, a hybrid combo kind of thing, which probably isn't the best uh, deal. For, for upgrades, I have the, um, come on, Surveillance Radar Mod 1 on here. It increases the time that the radar is up by 40%. I guess this is getting nerfed pretty soon to 30%. Um, but as of right now, you can have a radar basically for 56 seconds, which is awesome. I thought about putting this spotting aircraft mod on, but the problem with that obviously is if you're running a spotting aircraft, you don't have the radar on, okay? Um, you need to pick one or the other. Lately, uh, not a whole lot of destroyers. There's been a lot of uh, radar ships out there. So I've been thinking about it, but we'll see. And the gun range on this thing, if you were to get gun range out on this thing and engage at range, it's not a whole lot can do damage to you. I mean, it's really scary the amount of damage output that this thing can do with HE and AP even raining down. So yeah, 56 seconds action time with the radar with a 120 second cooldown goes out to 9.9 .9, um, with the radar so health boost so on and so forth all that stuff so let's get to some gameplay good morning I wanted to show you this stream of this video um, with a couple clan mates show some what you can do with the uh, Des Moines and some good teamwork we're on Warrior's Path here, and we're both, we're all deciding to kind of cover A at the beginning here. So, as bow tankers go, the Des Moines definitely does a great job of it. It's really good, um, even mid-range to fairly close range, depending on what you're going against. And it's simply because of these, these bow angles, man, that, you know, they're really good wedge bow angle so the thing i like the actually the the tier nine the buffalo over this thing is that you have another turret um 
So, that is nice, except for the reload on these guns, which I have adrenaline rush on this captain, so you're going to see the reload kind of shift a little bit as the game goes on and I start to lose hit points, but um, you'll see that I pretty much set up um, right around here, northern side of A, try to give some cover to the oxy going into the cap. Um, I'm going to park right about here at first. And then uh, we're going to see how it goes, see how this battle goes. So this combo is actually not bad. An Izumo, Donskoy, and then a Des Moines. Uh, reason I say that is because the Izumo has to be bow on, right? It's pretty much, it's a bow tanker. You almost have to ignore the third turret on it. The Des Moines is really good at bow tanking. So when they roll together, it's actually a pretty good combo. Um, especially if you're trying to grind out of that Izumo. <clears throat> Somebody on the, the pier looked at me wrong, so just had to teach him a lesson real quick. And then say hello to the rest of the village as I drove by. It's very important that you know you keep those villagers involved. This kid right here is actually, he's playing really aggressive. Probably a little more aggressive than I'd play in a kid. At the beginning of the match, anyway. Let's see a turplitz. So I'm like, hey, let's start some fires. Look at that blistering rate of fire, right? Five seconds. I think I get it down to 3.8 near the end of the match, something like that. Six shatters, of course. And then four penetrations. Five penetrations. And then I noticed that the Akatsuki and the kid aren't spotting anything over here, so I was like, well, that's kind of odd. So I'm really suspicious about poking around this island, but it does appear that the entire team, like in the minimap, right, has lemminged east. So I'm like, hmm. So I'm talking to Tree and I'm talking to Bob behind me, and I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking, I think it's time to move up. So I'm kind of, like I said, I'm apprehensive. I'm running about half speed here because I'm like, uh, yeah. Oftentimes when I do this, I end up getting blapped when I come around the corner. So I'm like really skeptical. And I'm trying to save my radar. I see that Akazuki over there, but the cab has got him lit. The Kerfers is on him, right? Akazuki dumped torps, I think, at the Kerr first. Oh, no, 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 no. So, I see they smoked, and I'm like, we need to kill this Akatsuki. I'm ignoring everything on my right, even though I'm kind of broad, which is bad. So now I'm shifting, because uh, Tree Killer actually called out this Des Moines. I was like, oh, crap, yeah, there's a Des Moines right here. So, I come right hard. I'm like, all right, let's do this. You're broad. I'm bow on. Let's play. Load AP. He starts pulling away. Switch right back to HE, because I think that angle I was just gonna bounce anyway. That turpits again. Has to hit me with HE, thank god. The angle I was at, he probably would wreck me. So this Des Moines seriously screws up, like, the, he just, he's trying too hard to keep his fire up, he should go dark and just run, and he doesn't, and he pays price for it. Because if he, if he went dark, ran about to where the Missouri is, and looped back to where he is bow in, he would have had a much better game. My health boost because I was tanking a lot of HE damage there. And we're just chunking away. I'm just gonna sit right here because I'm, I'm guarded from the fire on the east side. This Des Moines is in front of me. He wants to stay in front of me for some stupid reason. I just keep chunking.
every single time this Des Moines decides to pop a salvo off, he's just giving up more and more hit points. So I see the Missouri over here, and he's kind of bow on to me. I think, okay, well, I'm going to attempt to swing a little wide and then bring my bow around the island on the southern end. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm probably going to get wrecked if I pull out, but... I don't want to leave Tree the only one out here engaging that, that Missouri. I don't want him being the only target, so I pull up. Friendly Akatsuki unfortunately dies. And I kind of skirt slowly around, angling as much as possible, get those four turrets going. And I was actually really impressed at this angle that I was able to fire the third turret, but got several salvos off. And then I remember thinking, oh, he's going to be looking at me soon, so I need to start swinging the bow, and there you go. There's a 9,000 hit almost. Try to get my bow around on him so I can still fire the two forward guns. There's a fire. Just keep plinking away. So Bob's moving up a little bit behind us here. He hasn't become... Him and Tree haven't become primary yet, but they're going to be in... in it's unfortunate that I didn't have a tankier ship than this. But... Couldn't really help that too much, because they're going to start grabbing the aggro from pretty much everything in the middle there real shortly. So I'm like, okay, Missouri's dead, so I'm shifting fire to the Des Moines. Enemy battleship destroyed. And this Des Moines just doesn't get the idea that he should not be rod, man. He's just catching round after round after round. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my reload's already dropped a little bit from 5.2, I think, to 5. drop an AP on me like it's gonna do anything <coughs> and I'm like okay well if you're gonna do that I'll just keep starting fires on you that's fine even at this range the AP would probably be a good choice to fire at that Des Moines but I've found that I like HE because of the fact that it just it always provides damage for the most part especially at the higher tiers we either you start a fire or not so I knew there was a destroyer nearby. I didn't realize how close until those torps went by. I was like, oh crap. So I'm calling out to a tree that I have the Yu Yang lit with my radar. <clears throat> and I was thinking I can't pull out too much more because my angle I'm at is not good. So I'm trying to engage that Mogami. I wanted to pull out to get after that destroyer, but... There was just so much over there on the left that I couldn't tank too much. The ship is on fire. So what I decided to do here is I'm going to pull back. I'm going to try to swing my bow to the right and then come around a little bit better angle. Get a little speed up so I can actually get into the turn here. Now I'm lit, so I'm like, okay, the Mogami's got to be right in front of me here. And there she is. But I see the low health Des Moines off in a distance, and she was almost parked lengthwise. So I was like, I got to try to get a salvo off there. I had a few hits on that Des Moines, didn't really do a whole lot of damage, so at this point I'm like, okay, Bob and I need to be a little careful here. <clears throat> In hindsight, I'll tell you, I, th I, f I feel like Tree and I probably should have primaried those destroyers a little bit more. I think Bob takes a few torps, um, and they're going to be the deep waters, I believe. So 
So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can't see a whole lot, but there's a turpitz here, and I think I can fire over the mountain without being spotted. So I stated there's deep waters there, but I think Bob actually missed most of them. So I'm like, okay, I can engage this turpitz right. This is where the American cruisers excel. That arc is just sufficient enough to clear a lot of these low-lying islands. So if you got someone that can keep a ship lit in your firing arc, you could do a lot of damage to them from behind the cover, right? Which is basically what I'm going to do. I'm sitting right here, making sure I don't get that mountain indicator, and I'm just going to keep hitting this turpitz. Keep chunking away. Took his torpedo tubes from him. My reload's down to 4.9, I think. 4.8 now. I'm gonna just keep chunking on this turpids. Now, at this point, I didn't realize that tree had started pushing. I probably, if I really had realized he was pushing or that we had communicated, I would have probably changed how I was playing a little bit. Got a little bit more aggressive, but as is, he's pushing in on a Montana. He's got a Montana as St. Louis. No, Montana, two Montanas, excuse me. A Des Moines and Yu Yang on his left, so he pretty much had to move up. So now I'm trying to think of, see if there's a ship I can pull fire from. There's not really. The Mogami, I think, came out from behind a mountain. or was slow boating, that's what he was fired a few salvos at him and then I ran. I was like, okay, I gotta move up because tree's getting low on health. And I see that that wonderful Des Moines. He's coming out now. At least he's bow on now, however. That's nice. So I'm like, alright, I gotta grab some aggro here. Me and Bob gotta move up. Unfortunately that that Des Moines kills tree. I see the Mogami on the left. He's broad. He's going to try to torp that Hindenburg. So I pop off at him. He's out. So I note that Des Moines is inching forward. I'm trying to keep the fire. Just pour it on. There's the Des Moines, he's got his wonderful broadside to me again. So I'm like, okay, here's some AP for you. Right into your citadel. Or attempting to, anyway. And Booyaka. Two Enemy citadels. At that range, you're not going to avoid it. it. Your angle doesn't matter too much. Your bow on is one thing, but he was giving me too much side. So I, I tell Bob, let's kill this Monty. I probably should have told Bob to angle. The Zumo, if he was, is, is a damn good ship in terms of bow angle. If he was looking straight east, he actually probably would have tanked fine against the Montana and the stuff on the north side. You notice though, the Montana's hitting me directly on my bow. I'm at 10 kilometers and he's only chunking about two grand for me. So yeah, my reload's at about 4.5 now, I think. Something like that. I, every now and then I keep looking over my shoulder because of that. Because I knew that Monty was there. I was just expecting me to take a broadside any second now. So at this point I'm like, okay, I gotta move up. Because I gotta try to get this island here between me and them. Because there's another salvo of AP coming in. I'm just thinking any second I'm just gonna get ended. But he shot at Bob instead of me, unfortunately, because Bob is broad. So now I'm close enough to get my secondaries onto that Montana. He's doing a good job of kind of angling away. I'm trying to keep on him. I was hoping to get a Citadel, but it didn't really happen. So he's really sufficiently angled away now where I really can't do a whole lot with him, so I switch over to HE. I'm 
leave with 200 hit points, of course. That's normal. Take him out, and then I'm thinking immediately, I gotta, we gotta swing our bows north. So I remember telling Bob, swing the bows north as quickly as possible. The Hindenburg is just YOLOing in, which is unfortunate because it's a Hindenburg. It's a damn good ship. If he had pulled away and backed off, he probably would have had a much better game. Not that he had a bad game, but he's got four freaking kills, but. Unfortunately, he gets torped by the. Uh, oh, he gets hit by the Montana, I think, at the end, but he got torped by the Yu Yang. So now I'm just telling Bob, I don't. You and I cannot push forward too much more. Like, we really can't because that's. I mean, a Des Moines, a Montana, and a Yu Yang. So, and I, I screwed up here because I popped my radar earlier than I really should have. I should have moved up to this island right here and then pop my radar so I could have lit all three of them. Bob could have had shots on them. Instead, we're stuck to the mercy of of being blind um, on these guys until they get pretty damn close. So someone should just taking C. My expectation was that this Des Moines was going to come straight in, and I was thinking to myself, if I went towards C... I was going to be broad, and the, with my luck, the way luck works is he would come around this corner right as I was, like, right here, and he just one-shot me. At least at this angle, I was thinking I could tank some more damage, <coughs> maybe get lucky and they'll push. So I tell Bob I'm in reverse, so he reverses too. And then there's Montana, and this is where I realized I screwed up when the Montana lit. I realized I really screwed up. I should have, instead of just backing up, I should have headed toward Bob so that both of us were on that side of the island so we were both engaged. Because what's happening here is Bob's just getting primary down by that Des Moines and that Montana. And I can't do anything about it. This I failed my teammate here. I did not think about that. The fact that the Montana, realistically, we could have killed him really quickly. Now I have, an, I have angle, though, on the Montana. We're just going to lay into him. Obviously, my aim's off a little bit. I'm only hitting him with one and two shots. And unfortunately, Bob goes down because this, the, the amount of fire coming in on him was just hellacious. There's nothing he can do about it. And the Des Moines is doing exactly what the Des Moines does. He's sitting back behind, all the way back here, behind the second island, probably near the cap, chucking over the island. So I don't have a whole lot of hit points left. I'm thinking to myself, I need to try to angle. And there we go. I'm dead. Hope you all like this. Have a nice day. Like, sub, all that craziness.